So welcome everyone to today's tutorial on the Cell Types Knowledge Explorer. During today's presentation, you can ask questions on Zoom using the Q&A. Afterwards, you can ask us questions on YouTube um, or ask questions visiting our forum at community.brain-map.org. So just to get us started, my name is Caitlin. I work with the BICAN team here at the Allen Institute, and I lead also our education and engagement program. The Allen Institute is a biological sciences nonprofit located in Seattle with focused research areas in neuroscience, cell biology, and immunology. And we also support cutting edge research across the world outside of the Institute through the Paul Jallen Frontiers Group. Across the institutes, our scientific process is focused on tackling complex, broad, and hard problems in the fundamental biological sciences. And we practice big team and open science, uh, producing massive data sets, working across interdisciplinary teams, and releasing the data and tools that we generate publicly for others to use in their work. Uh, we have about 800 employees here at the Allen Institute. Um, and the, the work we're talking about here today is actually also affiliated with BICAN, which is a nationwide network for which we are one of the organizing centers. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Mike, who's going to tell you more about BICAN and uh, some of the work that we're doing at the Allen Institute on defining cell types. Mike? Thank you, Caitlin. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to give you, um, Jeremy, and I, we're, great, we're, we're happy for uh, that uh, we're able to put this together um, to Caitlin, our organizing committee and to BICAN. Um, and uh, Jeremy Miller and I are going to tell you uh, about the cell type knowledge explorer and, and um, it's in, put it in context with the rest of a kind of BICCN and BICAN activities. Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to control the slides. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. Um, this, <clears throat> this really starts out the whole the entire sort of cell type kind of atlasing program from the National Institute of Health and the Brain Initiative starts um, with around 2013 with a, a report put together by a, a committee that was sort of established to sort of really develop the structure of the brain, of the U.S. Brain Initiative and its activities. Um, and a, a big charge of that was a starting point in the, in the classification of cell types and to perform a census of neuronal and glial cell types in the brain with the observation that there was a, a definite, um, a, a bounded amount of cell types. Not every cell obviously was a type and to, dis to discover their properties and their distinguishing characteristics um, from their neurotransmitters and uh, uh, connectivity to patterns of gene expression and other things. Um, that this is regarded as an important step in determining the circuits uh, and which sort of govern brain function and our understanding of sort of the brain and health and disease. Um, so the first kind of step in this was an establishment of a, of a, a, of a group uh, to basically profile and uh, to investigate the possibility of large scale census in the brain. Um, this after in a preliminary period for uh, a few years developing technologies, this was launched as the Brain Initiative Cell Census Network, a set of uh, scores of, of kind of investigators and laboratories um, utilizing very sophisticated kind of multimodal techniques toward uh, the profiling and the kind of analysis of cell types. Um, you can also read about this in, a, in an ecosystem paper recently published in, in uh, PLOS Biology. Um, so the thing is that to understand cell types is that they are basically what are cells they group into types in some sense like all like trees, all trees are are, are different in their own way, but uh, uh, but they are evidently belong to classes of trees based on certain kind of genetic characteristics and other phenotypic kind of properties. In the case of cells, they have similar transcriptome profiles, similar morphology, and other fire electrophysiology and or connectivity patterns, which can be treated as kind of hypotheses for their organization. Um, and we try to move, we try to organize these cells in, in kind of a, a taxonomy or kind of sort of classification schemes that best represent their kind of different uh, sort of organization. As I mentioned, the te techniques that have been brought to bear on this problem range from um, transcriptomic, which produced a very kind of sort of reproducible type of highly quantitative signature for the characterization of types 
through a physiological and morphological to produce data-driven kind of organizations. And this is really the basis behind um, attempting to build any kind of organization or taxonomy of types and that would lead to kind of uh, software organizations that would enable this. And ultimately we wanna bring this to uh, using other kind of tools such as genetic tools, connectivity, et cetera, to really elucidate kind of circuit structure. Um, so there are, you know, I think that an important part of this is, is actually standardization. It's, you, you, we want consistent kind of naming and no, nomenclature that basically uh, identifies types so that people in different kind of domains and groups can, can speak in a similar way, such that, that we can advance our understanding of types and our ability to kind of describe uh, results in one sort of field and another. This kind of affects everything from brain science to immunology to other kinds of things. So these types of organizations are, are very important and will be very important in the way we understand disease. Classically, cells have been kind of uh, classified starting originally through the observations of original scientists of the early 1900s, such as Ramoni Cajal and colleagues and other people, um, in terms of the, their kind of visible kind of uh, structural patterns. It was evident in, in that um, in looking at kind of cell types that, or looking at cells through the microscope, that there were different types that have distinguishing properties. Um, a really nice kind of description of this approach and, and kind of uh, how information is organized in this way uh, can be found in uh, Giorgio Scoli's book, uh, Trees of the Mind, which is a very nice kind of description of uh, kind of the, the, a basically morphological approach to cell type classification. Um, and so these the different ways were this this these were done in it be before our ability to really do a kind of large scale single kind of cell and nucleus profiling, which now has provided a a far vaster, higher throughput way of examining detailed cellular structure. And this has been used throughout the consortium, originally in BICCN, now in BICAN, um, to essentially, as, as it, most everybody I'm sure here realizes, into the determining the molecular structure of, of cells and their types. Um, the basic way that this goes, of course, is you collect cells of nuclei, you disassociate them, potentially you use neuronal uh, labeling to label and distinguish cells of major classes or other genetic kind of, uh, kind of filters. And then you perform, you, you, then you, you run pipelines which, which capture uh, RNAs and map these RNAs um, to the g uh, g genomes. And then you can you perform data organization techniques, dimensioned reduction techniques, uh, unsupervised clustering, et cetera, and to identify these into apparent groups, which um, basically represent seemingly um, distinct kind of patterns. Um, now, these are not necessarily functionally validated patterns, but they are evidently reproducible kind of organizations that we see using uh, other modalities such as epigenetic data and other kind of things in which we see coherent structure which is uh, to be elucidated as we move forward. Um, and you, this just sort of shows how all this bursts to bear here. You can see that we have transcriptomics, we have um, multimodal techniques, ability to capture simultaneously um, morphology, anatomy, and, and, and other things in the cell. Uh, through methods such as PatSeq, we can do whole morphology, uh, brain-wide things through brain clearing techniques and other things, and we can bring lots of different things to bear. Uh, the more information, in some sense, the better in terms of elucidating what the nature of the type is. Um, we have to point out that th these these correspondences are, are imperfect, um, and they they whereas we do see kind of coherency, we don't always see uh, absolute kind of uh, uh, kind of class agreement between the th the techniques that are brought to bear by these different methods. Um, it's important to organize this information, and that's the key, is that we want, in addition to just sort of data sharing, right, and uh, having data available through publications and have and sort of other on request, we would like to organize uh, these things into structures and information that users, that scientists can adopt 
and and this is sort of the motivation behind the cell type knowledge explorer it, it's a, a a data kind of organization together with uh, features for information browsing and studying which jeremy will tell you all about um we this is only a first step right we uh, ultimately want to move more toward kind of a brain knowledge organization where individuals can collect information about what is known compared to to essentially new potentially new data and map that data and to understand what what we uh, what state our understanding of cell types is in and to explore and to collaborate on 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 these kind of things. So from here, uh, we're going to tell you now about how do you really use this cell type knowledge explorer? What what does it do, and, and what does it sort of benefit for scientists? So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I'm going to. Um... I guess Mike gave a good overview about kind of BICCN in general, kind of cell types, what they are and, and why we're interested in them. And I'm going to talk more about um, the Cell Technology Explorer as a whole, what it is, kind of where the data comes from and where we're going next and, and how to use it, of course. So the uh, Cell Technology Explorer is based off of this uh, Brain Initiative Cell Census Network, BICCN, a led mini atlas project. This was a comprehensive characterization and census of cell types in primary motor cortex. Um, it, it included more than 3 million total cells that were profiled using multiple modalities and species. So these included you know, human, uh, non-human primate, in particular marmoset, and a little bit of macaque, um, and then mouse. And there's a variety of different modalities that were um, used that I will briefly discuss some of. Um, but you know, this is a large, a large body of work, over 200 terabytes of data, and a variety of analysis tools. All of this was made freely available in various places. And this project is summarized in a flagship paper published in Nature, and I'll, I'll come back to this in a, in a minute. So, why primary motor cortex? Uh, this. The primary motor cortex, which in different species is abbreviated either MOP or M1, this is the main contributor for generating the neural impulses that pass from the brain down through the spinal cord. Um, it's an important uh, brain area for control and execution of complex movements. Um, it's well co pres conserved across species, um, and there's been a lot of study of it. So there's been a lot of anatomical, physiological, and functional studies that can help in interpret uh, what we come back get from uh, cell type information. Um, on the right here shows some images in um, three different species for where uh, primary motor cortex and the kind of secondary motor cortical area are um, in the brain. Um, and so this is this is kind of where all of the, the work that goes into the Cell Technology Explorer is focused. Um, so I'm going to now go through and um, discuss some of the uh, key findings that were um, Sorry. Uh, some of the key findings that came out of this, um, out of these projects. Um, this is not intended for to be comprehensive, but more just to give you a flavor for what you know how complex this data is and what was learned from this. Um, and if you want to know more about the science, I would encourage you to you know dive into some of these these studies. So I think one. The main finding was the molecular taxonomy of cell types in mouse, and, and including their spatial localization of types. And this was important um, as most of the other data from, from this project was anchored to the transcriptomic types that were defined in, in mouse. And so this up here is a representation of the mouse cell types. It's called a dendrogram or a tree. This is a way of, of after all of the cell types are defined, sort of organizing them based on how similar they are, their gene expression patterns are. And so you can see on the right a variety of cell types that are that are not neuronal types, and then you have some GABAergic interneuron types and some glutamatergic neuron types. Um, these labels up here represent sort of groups of cell types that have very similar um, expression patterns, um, and that in, in many cases have you know other biological uh, meanings, um, and then and so so these are, are the defined types. Um, a study in Murfish from Zhao Zhuang's lab 
uh, looked at where they were actually located in um, sections of tissue. And so you can see here in this IT neurons panel that these uh, glutamatergic types, um, intertelencephalic glutamatergic types, are very well constrained by layer. So there's these, you know, hot colored uh, layer two, three types at the top and some of these cooler colored layer six types in the bottom and all of these follow kind of a layer structure. Um, there was also uh, some studies looking at the epigenetics and gene regulatory signatures of these uh, types. I'm just showing one example at the bottom from one of these papers uh, for the gene NFIX, where there were two uh, enhancers that were identified in human in, in this yellow uh, color here. Um, and so you can see that these have areas of open chromatin, these little peaks on, on these, this plot here. Um, however, um, in mouse, only one of these peaks seems to be present and the other one seems to be missing. And so this is just a, a flavor of how some of the things that we find in one species are conserved and others and some of them aren't. Um, of course, we have data from uh, all of the genes across kind of all of the cell types. Um, and there, there's some good work going into looking at this in more detail. Um, there's also a, a patch -seek study from the Tolias lab looking at linking electrophysiology and morphology to these transcriptomic types. So you can see some of the labels that were added to these uh, transcriptomic types based on the morphoelectric properties um, and some examples of individual neurons down here. And I think a big takeaway from this is just by eye, you can see that as you scan across the um, the transcriptomic tree, there's a, a large variety of, of different uh, cell shapes and spatial lo locations um, from kind of across these different cell types. Um, there's also some conser uh, conservation that was identified between human, marmoset, and mouse with some species specializations. Um, this uh, dendrogram here shows the about 45 transcriptomic uh, types that were defined as, as conserved across species. Uh, you'll see this plot again uh, in a little while when I pull up the, the demo of the Cell Type Knowledge Explorer. Um, but basically, for some cell types, like this LAMP51, there's a single um, cell type in human, marmoset, and mouse that correspond well with one another. And then there's other examples like this parvalbumin one type, where there's quite a few types across species that we know collectively are, are pretty, you know, match across species, but we can't line them up one to one at all. Um, and so uh, this kind of, of analysis is, is a starting point at, at getting at, at things that may be, you know, either human specific or in some cases mouse specific or, um, you know, which just may be conserved across, across mammals. And then there were a number of, of studies that looked at the conne connection and projection maps of, of, of mouse cortical neurons. And so this is showing uh, one example of, of uh, projection targets from um, motor cortex uh, into various other places uh, in the mouse brain. And on the right here, you can see some example neurons that um, are from layer five intertelencephalic. So they, you can see they're projecting primarily within the cortex the cortex or the telencephalon, and then you have these extra telencephalic neurons that have very different targets projecting you know, many other places around the brain. And so all this is just a kind of a flavor of the things that, that came out of, of this, uh, this work. Uh, there, this culminated in a series of 17 studies that was published in Nature um, in, that involved more than 250 uh, researchers across 45 institutes. Um, and you know, here's a QR code and the link if you want to go into more detail into these, um, any of these uh, studies themselves. But as you can imagine, this is a lot of really dense information uh, spread out across many pages of, of work by many people. And uh, we wanted to create a tool that would summarize some of the key information from these papers at the um, level of individual cell types. So many of these studies are looking at a particular modality or a particular you know, kind of data across the whole uh, primary motor cortex. The Cell Type Knowledge Explorer is looking at sort of a complementary cross-section where we take a particular cell type and want to present a lot of information about an individual cell type. And so you know, why did we create this 
application. One is to consolidate knowledge and data about cell types in the primary motor cortex. Um, it's also intended to be a one-stop shop for access to the uh, data analysis and, and tools relative to relevant to this project. Um, we hope this can empower researchers to map their own data to this BICCN reference. Um, and then this uh, was intended as a blueprint for extension to cell types in other brain regions or organ systems. So now, you know, whole, whole brain studies are starting to come out. And, you know, this one focuses only on a single brain region. Um, but, but we hope it does a good job of, uh, of looking at the data from this brain region. And so, I mean, this this basically, to, to reiterate, takes a bunch of knowledge and data from, you know, BICCN, a, a lot of collaboration from us, from uh, from people at the J. Craig Venster Institute and the EMBL EBI, and a bunch of BICCN investigators to create this tool, um, which actually uh, got an uh, an award from NIH for, you know, data reuse. And so now. Um, I'm going to share my screen and jump directly into the, the demo. So, Caitlin, can, okay, thank you. Um, let me share my screen. Can someone confirm this view is the main yep. web page? Okay, excellent. So, so basically, the way that you would get to um, the um, Cell Type Knowledge Explorer, you can either use the QR code or the link that um, came up before. Or if you want to go to brain-map.org, that would be the starting point for really anything that you want to do um, from, from the Allen Institute. And so this is the main page to get to the Cell Type Knowledge Explorer you scroll down to a new way to browse the data, click on browse the data, and this will take you to the brain knowledge platform. Um, the cell type um, knowledge explorer is part of the brain knowledge platform. So by default, you see the, the data catalog. These are kind of all the different data sets that we have at the Allen Institute and in BICCN and in BICAN, and this is kind of an ever growing catalog of data. But up here in the corner, you can actually browse into the cell type knowledge explorer, which is what I'm going to do right now. OK, so this is the main page, which shows the different cell type taxonomies that are um, on the Cell Type Knowledge Explorer. You may recognize this uh, dendrogram from what I sh uh, showed earlier. It's the, uh, you know, the 45 or so common cell types between uh, the three species that were identified. Some text below tells you a little bit more about this, as well as um, what you know, the, the three different taxonomies we have included here. There's the mouse one, which is the one that um, that I went over uh, the dendrogram of, and I'll I'll go over what this is um, in just a minute. There's a, a human one and one that was done in um, in marmoset. Um, from the main page, you can also directly jump into any of the cell types by typing either a, a gene name that for genes that are um, marker genes or that are in the name of the cell type or by typing in any part of the cell type. So for example, if I type in VIP, it'll give me a list of the various VIP um, cell types across all three of, of these taxonomies. Um, this is actually powered by an ontology uh, service that lets you, allows you to do this kind of a search. Um, I'm going to jump into the mouse taxonomy down here by clicking on this uh, mouse uh, button. You can also do it by clicking on the middle of the circle over here. OK, so this is the main mouse taxonomy. This is what we call a sunburst plot, which is another way of visualizing um, cell types. The inner ring are sort of the broadest cell type, you know, the GABAergic inner neurons, glutamatergic neurons, the non-neuronal and non-neural cells. The outer ring is all of the individual cell types that were identified. So these correspond to the sort of the names, the leaf nodes of the tree that, that I showed earlier. And then the kind of intermediate cell types are, are, this inner, are this middle ring. On the left panel, you have information about the taxonomy, kind of a, some summary text, a link out to the flagship publication that I talked about, some inf general information about the taxonomy. The brain region that we studied in, in all of the cases here, you're just going to see primary motor cortex. But you could imagine in a version of this that looks at other brain regions, you'd have other uh, 
cortical areas that, or other areas that showed up, um, some information about the donors, and direct access for downloading all of the data. So if you don't care about the whole study and just want to get the data, this is a good way to do that as well. Um, there's also a link out to azimuth, which is a way of mapping your own data to this um, taxonomy, and I'll come back to this later. So as an example, I'm going to go to lay the cell type knowledge card for layer 5 ET by clicking right here. And again, as a reminder, you could also type L5 ET up here, and that will get you to the same place. So I'm going to do it this way. OK, so this is a, uh, a card, what we call a cell type knowledge card for layer 5 ET. Um, if you want to know what layer 5 ET stands for, you can read the summary up here, layer 5 extra telencephalic projection neurons. There's a variety of other names for it, which are listed here, along with some other um, information in kind of text form about this cell type. Um, on the left panel, you have some information about kind of the cell the cell type in the context of this taxonomy. You have information about its, its neighborhood. So it's a subset of the glutamatergic types. It has four cell types, which you can see listed below here if you click on the cell types. Again, primary motor cortex, some subject information. Additional aliases, so these are also called burst firing layer 5 neurons or pyramidal tract neurons or thick tufted layer 5 pyramidal neurons. Um, NSFARS markers, which basically are a set of genes which together can identify the, this cell type type from other um, cell types in the primary mouse primary motor cortex, and then some semantic tags which help with kind of organization behind the scenes. There's also a link out here to the ontology that um, kind of puts this cell type in the context of other data that was collected from this project and um, or other cell types that are collected from this project and more generally in the community. Okay, and then on the right side here, you have most of the, I guess, the, the meat of the, of the card. Um, these are organized by um, sort of modality. So you have, a, I'll go through these more carefully, but you have transcriptomics, morphology, electrophysiology, spatial localization, and epigenetics on this particular card. Um, within each of these um, modalities, you can li see links for the different data sets. Right now, we're just showing one of them, but there's actually seven different um, gene expression data sets that went into this mouse project. So I've just now switched to another one. Um, I'm going to switch back to this first one. Um, for all of these data modalities, you can click on the More Data button to link out to the data download. Um, this, for, um, I'll, I'll do this as the as an example for transcriptomics, but you can do this for any of any of them. Um, we have basically the data download for all of the transcriptomics um, information is this um, Nemo archive, um, and so this is one of kind of the landing page for this site for the Nemo Archive, where you can download the raw or the analysis data and get some information about the project. There's also a link out to the project summary. And this brings you back to the other part of the Brain Knowledge Platform and gives you this sort of data catalog for this particular um, data set that, was, that you're highlighting now um, from the cell type knowledge card. And then there's also a way of exploring the data, which is in this case in the um, what is this called? Nemo Analytics Portal, where if you just choose a gene, it can, it'll take you over to, to the main, um, an, another way of viewing data for this gene. And you can really type any gene you want in and get information about this kind of this data set in this in this Nemo Analytics Portal. And there's, uh, I think, a whole variety of things that are in here that were collected as part of the, um, the Mini Atlas project. Okay, so. For the individual cards, what you see on the left is this gene expression panel. This is a dot plot where the color of the dots represent how high the, the gene is expressed and the size of the circle represents how much, kind of how many cells within that type express that gene. And what you're seeing is marker genes for all of the different sort of sibling types, layer 5 ET T, which is highlighted in gray, and the kind of the sibling glutamatergic neuron types, and marker genes for all of the different types. You can see the NSFARS marker genes for layer 5 ET are highlighted here with this arrow. On the right, 
you can see a UMAP, which basically shows in a low dimensional representation of where these layer 5 ET neurons are with respect to all of the other neurons that were collected um, from transcriptomics. Um, and as expected, pretty much all of them grouped together. That, that's kind of by definition. Um, and then down here, you have a way of viewing some cluster metrics for you know, genes or UMI, which is basically number of reads that were detected. Um, and you can see that layer 5 ET neurons actually have more genes than any of the other glutamatergic neurons. So this is one sort of distinguishing feature of this type from, from other cell types. OK, if we scroll down, we can then see morphology. And so these are cells that were collected and, and based on their gene expression were, um, were found to be um, layer 5 ET types. We have two examples from each of the um, each of the four layer 5 ET types, so the layer 5 ET1, 2, 3, and 4. And then for context, there's some si sibling reconstructions from the you know, layer 2, 3 IT, layer 4, 5 IT, and, and so on. And you can see that these look relatively similar up here. And kind of by eye, these look quite different. And then on the left here, um, for all of the layer 5 ET types, you can see there um, sort of the location of their soma and the average and standard deviation of the um, dendritic arbors of these types to get a, sen a sort of more quantitative sense of, of where kind of these kind of what these cells look like. Um, for any of these boxes, um, if if they look too small for you, you can click this um, this button, which will pop it out into a full screen view, so you can get a better better look at um, at what these images look like. You can also, for any of these boxes, learn more about the, the data and the, the um, image themselves by hovering over this information blob. And this will tell you um, kind of more information about, about the data set. So for example, this tells you that the raw morphology data and the metadata, it can be obtained from the brain image library or bill. So if we were to click on the download the data from the more data here, this would link you out to Bill to the appropriate place to download the data. OK. Below the morphology, you can see the electrophysiology -physio information. This left panel is some summary uh, electrophysiology information across the different, um, kind of across all of the cells. So again, the layer 5 ET, which is the cell type card we're on, is highlighted in gray. Um, and the other kind of neighboring Glutamatergic types are, are also shown, but, but not highlighted. Um, just by eye, you can see the input resistance here for layer 5 ET is lower than many of these other types. Um, the uh, membrane time constant seems to be higher than, than maybe some of these other types. Um, and then if you, like me, don't really know what these all stand for, you can actually look at some at an example trace to get a sense for what an individual spike would look like and kind of what the spike trains would look like in, in kind of different situations. OK, below this, um, we have the spatial localization of the layer 5 ET types. This is a MRFish section um, that shows, for context, the peel surface, which is just the VLMC cells. And then the the sort of lowest uh, cortical, or sorry, the lowest neuronal layer, this layer five, sorry, layer six B types. And so this is the kind of the bottom of the cortical stack. And then where the cell type of interest is found in this particular tissue section. And so these are the layer five ET cells, and you can see they're pretty well constrained within layer five. Um, on the left, this is quantified, where across all the tissue sections, you can see the sort of fraction of um, the, the normalized cortical depths and then the fraction of the glutamatergic cells at that depth that are these layer 5 ET cells. And again, the key point is that these are pretty well constrained within the cortical depth. Um, this is true largely of, of, of glutamatergic neurons um, and can be you know, visualized here for the layer 5 ET types, or sorry, ET cells. And then the final panel shown on this plot is the epigenetics. Um, at the moment, this one doesn't have any enhancer regions shown. But if you look at, at one of the marker genes, this is the sort of the top NSFARS marker gene, which is a, a gene model. You can see kind of how 
Uh, in this case, it's called layer 5 PT, which is one of the aliases. But you can see what the sort of um, epigenetics looks like in this uh, cell type versus some of the other related types. Um, and again, if, if you want to explore this more, you can go to explore the data. In this case, this brings out to the brainome, which is um, from one of the UCS D collaborators labs, and you can explore all of the gene, sorry, the epigenetics data, um, along with other uh, data types and really search anywhere you want um, in the genome. Okay, so this is all the information we have about layer five ET as a whole. Let's say we now are interested in looking at the individual kinds of layer five ET types. So for example, if you remember from both these morphologies, you can see reconstructions from four different types. And from over here on this left panel, you can see that there's four different types list shown here and that all four of them are also listed under kind of this, this neighborhood view. I'm interested in seeing what these layer five ET1 types are now. So I'm gonna go to the cell type card for the layer five ET1 types. And so this now is showing the same kinds of plots, um, but the context has changed. So now, for example, this plot here showing um, gene expression is, is showing layer five ET1 with respect to the other layer five ET types. And so these NS forest markers that are now shown are for just layer 5 ET1. And so you can see this CRYM gene is really highly expressed in layer 5 ET1 and is much lower in these other types, um, along with these more general layer 5 ET markers that came out in, in the you know, layer 5 ET um, cell type. You can also see that now the um, gene express, the cells are restricted to a subset of this bottom island. And so this must be the, you know, the layer 5 ET1 part of the island. And this is the other layer 5 ET types. Um, cluster metrics, again, not too much to say here. Um, by my eye, I don't see much difference between the layer uh, 5 ET1 and these other layer 5 ET types. But there are um, quantitations available that you can explore on your own through the more data tab if you are interested. Um, Electrophysiology, I mean, I, you can see maybe some, some more differences here where, you know, maybe there's a little bit higher input resistance and um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure necessarily about some of these other ones, but, but again, you can see an example um, trace over here on the right. Um, and I think the, the novel component here for these, this lower level of of the sort of the most highest resolution types are a way to link across species. And so for the layer five ET types, you can see how, how the layer five ET types from marmoset and human correspond to this layer five ET1 type in mouse. And these sort of red boxes with the arrows are the ones that were the highest, um, sort of the most related to, um, to this type. So for example, if we're interested in, in human, we go to the human side, see that this, um, this type is the most similar. And if we click here, it'll bring us over to the human taxonomy. And so you can see now, you see the human anatomical structures, a different UMAP, different cell type names, it says in human primary motor cortex, because we're now looking at the human um, taxonomy. And so this is a way of kind of going back and forth between the species if you're interested in which cell types are the most similar. Um, between species. OK, I'm going to jump back up now to the main human taxonomy just to show you this right component. As I mentioned, a way of viewing your own data in the context of, of the taxonomy. Um, that is azimuth. And this is a tool developed by the Satija Lab, which lets you basically take your own data if you've collected single cell or single nucleus RNA sequencing data from cortex and want to get out the um, sort of mini atlas, the, the primary motor cortex cell type labels on your own data. You can upload your data here um, and you know hit hit go. Um, I'm not actually going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is open up this presentation, a slideshow. Um, and you what you would end up getting is basically your data um, with the new labels, in this case, by the subclass, you could also you would, can also get them by the individual cell types. 
um, you can download the predicted cell types and, and scores, and you'd then have you know, our own labels. And as, as Mike you know, brought up earlier, it's important for things like when, people, when multiple people are publishing papers on primary motor cortex, it's confusing if um, you have different names for everything. And so, so this is, I think, a useful tool for, for that sort of thing. OK, so the last thing that um, we wanted to talk about is just um, you know, what, are, what are some related tools from you know, BICCN and BICAN and the Allen Institute to this cell type knowledge explorer um, if you're interested in exploring cell types in other ways. I'm not going to go into any detail in any of these tools. This is more just to tell you that they exist. And if you're interested, you can go follow up in um, sort of other, <laughs> other webinars and tutorials or explore on your own. Okay, so Mike mentioned this earlier, but if you're if you're interested in in sort of the other things that are around um, in uh, BICCN, this is a good paper to um, to review. This you know BICCN um, data ecosystem. I'm going to focus more on um, Allen Institute uh, tools for for the next few slides. Um, so if you're interested in transcriptomics data, uh, we have on our cell type that brain-map.org, RNA-seq page, um, a list of a variety of, of, uh, of cell types, not just in motor cortex, where you can download any of this data you want. You can explore with online visualizations that I'll show you in the next slide. And for a subset of them, you can um, explore the RNA-seq data in the genome browser view. This M1 10x genomics data set is one of the data sets that's included in the cell type knowledge explorer. So. Um, for that particular human data set, you can you can view that here as well. The way that you see the data is there's both the dendrogram view um, where you have a heat map of gene expression for any of the genes you want. There's just a set of genes that are shown by example, but in this tool you can actually look at any gene in the entire genome. There's also a way of viewing this in the context of a UMAP. Um, so if you're interested in from the cell type view, you'd want to go to the cell type knowledge explorer. If you want to learn more about genes, this is where you could do that. Um, we also have a way of viewing some of our uh, mouse visual cortex data um, that was collected through PatchSeq. So the M1 data um, was from the Talias lab. That was basically a focus of primary motor cortex. Um, here, this study uh, looks at primary visual cortex, and we have a, a, a tool for visualizing sort of individual cell cards for, for some cells. Um, and you can filter based on what cell type you're interested in um, or um, some other uh, kinds of, of sort of quantitative metadata and see examples down below. I think this is an, a, a fun tool to explore um, also. Um, we have a whole bunch of stuff related to human aging and Alzheimer's disease as part of the Seattle Alzheimer's Disease Brain Cell Atlas. Um, I'm, this, this project is, is very near and dear to me, um, and so it pains me to only spend about 10 more seconds talking about it. Um, we have basically, you know, gene expression data, you know, neuropathology, um, epigenetics, and a lot of other cool stuff that you can um, look at here if you're interested. And then I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about this um, Allen Brain Cell Atlas, or ABC Atlas, which is a new um, sort of a new uh, tool that currently allows um, you to explore whole mouse brain, um, over 2 million QCed cells based on single cell and single nucleus RNA sequencing, and then about 4 million cells that were collected as part of a MRFISH um, study. So you can see bas basically the spatial context of uh, um, of individual cell types and of expression of, of genes. Um, so you can color basically either one of these UMAPs by cell type and either one of these UMAPs by gene. Um, and I think equally important to the really cool mouse data that you can explore here is the fact that there's now a technological framework for representing cell type taxonomies both now and in the future. Um, and here's just another view of, of the mouse data where you can see expression of TAC2 and it's you know, really focalized to certain sort of areas in, in, the, in the mouse brain. And you could actually show on this left panel the same view of the uh, MRFISH data if you wanted to see what the cell types were that were located in these same areas of, of the mouse brain. OK, so I, here's a link to the uh, ABC Atlas if you're interested as well. This is. Right now, focused on primary, uh, sorry, not primary, of course, focused on whole mouse brain, but we'll soon include 
additional um, human data from the, the Seattle Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, project that I briefly mentioned a few sl uh, slides ago. Um, it'll also have additional um, ATAC-seq and, um, sorry, not ATAC-seq, additional RNA-seq and Murphy fish data sets in mouse. Um, there will also be adding the CCF underlay soon. So you'll be able to see what the brain regions are and where their boundaries are. Um, since it's part of the brain knowledge platform, um, it will have interoperabil interoperability with other in analytics tools and with kind of the infrastructure of the Allen Institute and you know, BICAN in general. And I think of interest to, the, to this group is that um, there will is the potential inclusion of other data modalities at a later time. And so we'd love to hear your feedback on how we could integrate some of the cell type knowledge explorer sort of components into the um, future iterations of the ABC Atlas. Um, the final tool that we are developing at, that will be available soon is this Map My Cells um, tool, which is the same idea as Azimuth. It'll let you label transfer data from and from the whole mouse brain initially and other um, other data sets at a later time um, onto your own data so you'll be able to get the same cell type names that, that we use for, for your data as well okay and um, we're about to open the Q&A but if we don't answer any of your questions as Caitlin mentioned you can always visit the community forum and post any questions there. Uh, we would also love to have any feedback about this webinar in general or about the cell type knowledge explorer as a whole and so this is a place where you can provide that feedback um, and uh, again thank you for um, your attention and mike and i and others on the panel would be happy to answer any questions that you may have um, at the moment um, All right, we have a few questions that have come in in the chat um, or in the Q&A. Um, if you have any additional questions, please keep those coming. I'll get my video on so you can see me. Um, do we have an API for this tool? For this tool, I don't believe we have an API. We have a GitHub repo where all of the, the kind of components of this tool are, are hosted. And we have links out to all of the various other um, pieces of information that were sort of underlying it. Um, but the ABC Atlas will be based off of sort of have a much stronger back end and will allow for more kinds of programmatic access. I don't, I, maybe Mike has more information about no, no, no it's, it's true that presently there's no pr programmatic api access um uh, although we do have the ability to uh allow users to get the, the data behind it should they be interested yeah. our next question was from the presentation portion at the beginning is it possible to access these graphics Many of the graphics that were in that beginning portion were either taken directly from the cell types knowledge explorer or from the paper package that we linked. So I would encourage you to check those out. All right, our next question is, we know that while transcriptomics provides information about RNA level, it doesn't directly provide information about protein levels or activities. Why did we measure transcriptomic data instead of proteomic data? Yeah, Jeremy, would you allow me to take this one? Um, yeah, so, you know, this it's a good point and it's a good question. And then the proteins are ultimately determining the kind of phenotypic kind of behavior uh, of a cell. H however, especially until recently, a really accurately profiling kind of proteomic kind of conformation and, and, and protein use is not really a very feasible way, a uh, high, high throughput kind of way. Um, so simultaneously, although the, gene, the genes, as you do indicate, do not are, are not always predictive of kind of uh, protein activity and protein level, it does provide, you know, a, a heritable kind of reproducible thing, which is really behind um, really the characterization that one is looking for. Ultimately, cell type 
profiling should be included, but it does depend on a lot of other kind of, um, you know, even epigenetic and post-translational phenomena that would be involved. And it's probably not as suitable for a first level classification. Jeremy, anything to add? No, I, I think I think that's it. I mean, I think the short the short answer is it's, it's way easier getting RNA than protein. Um, we've also found, and we've also found that for many many other modalities, you can attach that information to the transcriptomically defined cell type. So I would hope that in the future, as protein data becomes available, it will be possible to link a protein sort of based cell type definition to our transcriptomic atlases and sort of connect them that way. Great. Uh, I'm not sure I quite understand the next question. When we search for cell types such as L5ET, is the information on the page such as morphology and electrophysiology consistent and complete for other similar searched cell types? I'm not quite sure I understand what similar search cell types means. Um, I can I would say for all of the subclass level um, sort of searches like VIP neurons, layer 5ET, layer 23IT, all of those, you'll have roughly the same information on the page if that's what the question means. Um, it depends for it depends on how like some of the rare types, there just wasn't any or very much patch seek data collected, so there wouldn't be as many cells shown there. Um, and for some of some or possibly all of the higher resolution, for some of the higher resolution cell types in particular, you won't find any patch seek data. Um, I, I think it it depends on what what data was available and how we could link things up. Typically, within a given cell type, the various data from the various modalities look similar. Like you won't find wildly different looking cells in a, the same cell type usually. Um, Hopefully that addresses it. Yeah, um, I I see um, a follow up. I'm not sure um, uh, whether this answered your question. Um, if it didn't, please uh, clarify further, and we'll take that. Uh, we'll we'll just hang tight for any other questions that might roll in. Um, all right, one more question has come in. Uh, it seems like this is mainly transcriptomic data from cortical areas. Is there data available from white matter? And I'll add to that question. How about subcortical as well? Other subcortical. Um, for the cell type knowledge explorer, it is only motor primary motor cortex. Um, Probably the dissections included the white matter that are it's like really close to the um, motor cortex. So like when they cut down below layer six, they'll get a little bit of white matter there. And probably some of the oligodendrocytes are going to be part of that. Maybe some of the other cells as well. Um, the ABC Atlas's whole brain includes white matter, includes subcortical. Um, many of our other data sets are many of them, but not all of them are cortical, other cortical areas. But there certainly is other other information that's that's we've collected. We just started with Cortex for most of our projects for sort of biological and practical reasons, but are, have now expanded to cover pretty much the whole brain for transcriptomics. Um, for other modalities, I'm less sure about. Great. Uh, well, I am not seeing any additional questions. As a reminder, you can post questions at any time using our forum at community.brain-map.org. You, you can also get there from brain-map.org by clicking on support up at the top right corner. Uh, we'll be posting this uh, webinar to YouTube within the next couple of days, so you can watch the recording there. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate that you've taken the time to learn about this tool with us. Um, if you have any questions, uh, again, use that link to follow up or any comments. We encourage you to use our feedback form to let us know. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Yeah, thanks, folks.